Our next presentation is actually, I want to start this by saying, who do you think is the best startup CEO friend when the startup is growing? Does anyone have any clues? I don't have that much time to wait so for the answer. So I think one of the best friends that startup CEO will have during their growth is basically a lawyer because there's so many legal issues that you have when you're growing, you know, when you're starting from a garage and growing to multinational corporation incorporated all around the world. So please meet uh, a partner of Raidla Leon Norkus, Elegius Burgess, who is going to give you a presentation on how the start, what kind of difficulties startup face and how lawyers can help them to minimize them. Please meet the Ligus. So, hello. I see the audience and they think, you probably think, who is this guy? One of these boring lawyers who is going to tell us about uh, complicated stuff and at the end of the presentation he will tell us you have to come to us, we'll explain, we'll have to pay a lot of money but we'll save you. I'll try to be uh, more creative as we are in our law firm and uh, the reason I'm standing here, we are the law firm that actually works with startups. A lot of people would say this is impossible because startups don't have the money and uh, we are one of the largest firms, one of the most expensive, unfortunately. Uh, well, fortunately for us. Uh, but we do know the ways and uh, we do have an interest because we think that this is uh, something uh, also worth our attention and uh, we have already found ways to uh, work with uh, startups. But uh, instead of going into very technical, boring stuff. I will shoot some entertainment for you first. Okay, as usual. Somebody can help me. Okay, thanks. It's the industrial revolution. No more decks. No more mainframes. That changes everything. That's pretty cool, I guess. Hi, That's Charlene. Cool. Hey, hello. It's profound. How could you not tell me about this before? No, I was just working on it for my own. It was exactly. Hobby. Exactly. For your own. For you. It's, it's what you wanted. It's what your gut and your instinct wanted. Your big evolved brain wanted something that didn't exist. And so you just willed it into existence. It's, what do you call the system? The operating system. The operating system. And That's it just what I call shows. It. Yeah, it's just a real time display of current operations. You can things. see what you're working on while you're working on it. Okay. Don't you see, get look. this? This is freedom. This is freedom to create and to do and to build and, and, and as artists, as individuals. But look, you're overreacting. Even if you were developing this for freaks like us, and I doubt you are. Nobody wants to buy a computer. Nobody. How does somebody know what they want if they've never even seen it? So most of you will recognize uh, Mr. Jobs, Mr. Wozniak, and the garage. Well, this is another garage, but uh, the sim symbolics are there. They have started a business in the garage. They gave a definition to a startup which starts with something small and becomes something very big. And uh, here we have um, an idea. An idea itself is not sufficient, as you know. Next to the idea to develop, you need a capital. But we strongly believe that uh, the third element uh, in the development of a startup is legal support. And uh, without those three elements, you will not end up in the success. So what does it take to build a startup? First of all, you have the stage of growth, the stage of uh, incorporation, development, and uh, this stage is, of course, very important. But uh, naturally, in this stage, you don't have the money. And when you ask us, when do you need a lawyer? I would say definitely at an early stage. But do you need a sophisticated and expensive law firm? You'll be surprised, I will say not at this stage yet. However, 
it doesn't say that you should not think about important things at this stage and p possibly consult the lawyers and uh, the cheaper you can find, maybe your classmates or someone you know from early age can help you. But uh, this is, these are the issues you have to bear in mind when you are developing. So incorporation, first of all, you cannot work in a garage without any legal entity, without any understanding where you're going. You can invent things, but the next thing you, you want to take care of is the structure. The other things are naturally employment or consultancy and uh, documents, which uh, mean that you need to have people working for you under certain regulations. You have service agreements from uh, the lease of premises to any kind of supply, etc. You have intellectual property rights. And here I want to stop for a while because uh, in many cases for startups these days, this is the area where you want to be very careful. You want to use whatever knowledge and resources you have to foresee that you will have certain inventions. You will have the will, the wish to materialize these inventions. And in the modern world, you have to know that uh, there are many other startups like yours working possibly on the similar things, inventing similar things. And if you want to really lock the value in a company, in a startup, you want to take care of these issues at an early stage and foresee that when you have the value, your invention will be protected. The other things you need to take care about is uh, shareholders agreement. If you have uh, different shareholders, different owners of the startup, uh, you want to have an understanding of how you are going to work for a longer period of time, materialize the value and not have disputes when you actually have that value. A lot of startups uh, think that uh, they have started from scratch. They do not need to document the relationships that they have. Uh, in most cases, these will be friends or good acquaintances who think that they will stay as friends forever. And of course, uh, we as lawyers see all the other bad scenarios where friends become enemies because they didn't define their relationship from the very start. And when you have value, it is too late normally to discuss who has put what value into the company and who has to get which result. And of course, financing documents, uh, again, at an early stage, you don't normally have a lot of financing. But uh, if you do, you definitely have to take care of documentation under which you are working. The other stage is uh, how you materialize the value. And uh, you have different stages in the startups. You have uh, uh, financing, uh, normally the very early stage when you have already built some kind of uh, understanding of what the company is. And uh, you have built possibly some value, but uh, uh, you're still too early to attract uh, new shareholders or participants in the business. Then you may move to the stage where you are already having new participants and uh, these are normally venture capitalists or angel investors but in general the this attraction of uh, external uh, financing and external participants uh, I is uh, quite similar in terms of documentation and what you really think need to think about first of all you normally start with a term sheet which defines uh, general conditions then you normally want to again this not to disclose your ideas and your know-how, which you have already accumulated in the startup, to an external parties, which uh, may be your competitors or may become your competitors. Uh, so you normally enter into a non-disclosure agreement uh, before you even start talking about details of your business. Then you talk about investment agreements and uh, all kinds of uh, different investment vehicles, uh, from convertible loans or bonds uh, to shares, but share subscription, share purchase, and uh, eventually you may talk about uh, the initial public offering, uh, the IPO, which is always a very attractive and uh, 
uh, method of uh, getting more money into the business, but uh, of course you do IPOs when the business is uh, big enough. So uh, in terms of venture capitalists, you <laughs> normally think that these are good friends of yours and they work as uh, good friends of startups. Uh, they have some experience, they offer support, they offer money, they offer big future, uh, but uh, you have to Bear in mind that, uh, as one of the venture capitalists actually said, uh, picking a venture capitalist is more permanent than marriage. And uh, indeed, when you have uh, certain documentation for the cooperation with the venture capitalists, you have to be careful because uh, if you pick a wrong spouse, at least you can uh, get divorced. Uh, which with a venture capitalist, uh, you can get divorced, but uh, not always not always it is an easy task so you have understood that it's all very complicated it's very scary but you think where is the solution and uh, the solution is uh, as i said uh, to talk to people who have experience who have an understanding of how it works and uh, we think uh, we are uh, representing these kind of people and of course uh, we're not the only ones but uh, those that think that uh, startups is part of our business uh, can actually provide uh, substantial support so what we offer and what you would be looking for in uh, cooperation with lawyers is first of all tailored solutions because uh, it is very fair to say that the standard uh, practice that uh, most of the law firms, especially the larger law firms have, are not tailored to startups. We normally have to look into different working corporation scenarios than we do with larger businesses, large corporations, and uh, wealthy individuals. As I said, startups normally don't have that much money. They have uh, a very big potential, uh, everybody thinks, but uh, this is something which is not a daily routine. Secondly, you need to look for people who are actually going to understand that your task is return on investment, and they will have to share this understanding with you. They will have to look into the perspective and uh, try to help you to actually earn money instead of just blocking the very bright ideas that you have by a bunch of papers and advice that it is all very risky and you should not do this, you should not do that. The other thing is uh, legal fees and uh, here again uh, we need a very new approach and uh, if you look into a worldwide experience and uh, understanding how to deal with uh, startups for uh, traditional law firms that uh, have not been used to say uh, businesses that uh, provide uh, good potential but uh, don't have that much yet so we have to have a different structure hourly fees which is a very standard uh, billing uh, method for law firms doesn't work it doesn't work because uh, you don't know the budget, hourly fees are high, and you can end up paying huge amounts of money for something you cannot, you, you cannot actually allow yourself. So the other things uh, we can offer and uh, any startup should be looking at uh, is uh, different uh, structures from hourly fees. Uh, first of all, you can have uh, capped fees, you can have uh, success fees, you can have deferred fees. It's not completely different uh, from the other scenarios that are available also for other businesses. But uh, what are uh, really different uh, novelty solutions are the options or stock uh, for uh, the advisors, not, ne not necessarily only lawyers, but uh, uh, your advisors who help you to develop the business. Uh, those uh, structures can also be implemented. Uh, I would not say it's a very easy solution, but uh, this is a possibility and 
uh, both uh, lawyers and the startups should be thinking about it. And uh, as I said, uh, I'm not talking here on a theoretical basis. We have actually done quite a few startup financing and investment deals. Uh, for Lithuania, I think uh, we are definitely the leader by the number. And uh, we have told ourselves that uh, this is the area we should be looking carefully into, even if we understand that uh, it is not our traditional uh, focus, which uh, actually provides uh, the, the best business uh, and the most sustainable one. But uh, this is something new. We like new. We like to be innovative. And for the very roundup, my advice to you is to be a practical little pig. You all know the tale of uh, the three little pigs, uh, one of them being a practical one, preparing for the future, uh, building the good house, good startup, taking care of the documentation, taking care of the risky legal issues that uh, always arise in the context. And uh, unless you do that, uh, when the wolf comes, you don't want to look like that. So thank you very much.